the Charles Norman Show, Episode 2. I have a more exciting show planned for you all today. We're going to finish recapping Week 1 of the NFL season, then we'll move right on to Week 2. I'll let you know what I think about last night's game, then we'll preview Week 2. I'm picking games again this week. I have more to say about the Ray Rice fiasco. I didn't really give my opinion on that situation on Monday because I was pissed with the NFL. I also have a couple of questions for Mr. Roger Goodell. Should he be fired, yes or no? I have more on John Rivers' death. Does Iggy Azalea really have a sex tape? And in closing today, we'll revisit Monday's weekly assignment and inspiration topic of courage. I'll share my story about my quest for courage. And also, I conducted my first interview with my older cousin and champion of courage, Samson DeVard. Here we go, straight into sports, people. The Giants were dominated by the Lions on Monday. I thought the game was boring. The Cardinals and Chargers game was pretty entertainment. Entertaining. Nice defensive struggle until the second half. That's my type of game. Last week, I went 8-8 eight and eight in picking the games. This week, I am 0-1 thanks to the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Ravens demolished the Steelers 26-6. Big Ben and company did not score a touchdown. I have never seen a, seen a Steelers defense look so bad. Dick LeBeau just isn't getting to the defense like he normally would, I guess. And maybe time for him to take a seat. Go do some rich old people stuff, Dick, while you still can. You've done enough. There were two penalties in last night's game that I didn't agree with. The first is Courtney Upshaw's sack on Big Ben. He smashed him, but he was penalized for leading with the crown of his helmet. Come on, I know it's the rule, but it wasn't a dirty hit. It was a goodie. That hit would have been on You Got Jacked Up. Remember that on ESPN? Ben, you got jacked up. Later in the game, Troy Palomalo delivered a hit on Owen Daniels that I thought was a clean hit. However, the refs did not. It was a textbook shoulder-to-shoulder hit. He led with a shoulder, the same kind of hit that happened early in the game, and there was no flag thrown. I think the NFL has to be more consistent when throwing flags on these type of plays. Now, the moment I've been waiting for are my picks for this Sunday's game. I have Miami over Buffalo, Carolina over Detroit, Atlanta over Cincinnati, New Orleans over Cleveland. Minnesota over New England, upset. Arizona over New York, Tennessee over Dallas, Jacksonville over Washington, Seattle over San Diego, Tampa Bay over St. Louis, Denver over Kansas City, Green Bay over the Jets, Houston over Oakland, and I'll take San Francisco over Chicago. I think we'll have a great week in the football. I'll discuss Monday night's game on Monday night, the game between the Eagles and the Colts. I had to give my boys a pep talk, and here we are with entertainment. CBS pulled Rihanna from Thursday Night Football's opening theme last night because of the whole domestic violence situation going on with the NFL. The Ravens played last night, and that's the team Ray Rice played for. Rihanna was a victim of a very public domestic violence situation with Chris Brown a few years back. CBS didn't want Rihanna to open the show in the midst of the Ray Rice fiasco. Speaking of Ray Rice, after watching the elevator video multiple times, I have to say, from what was shown, Ray Rice was completely in the wrong. Ray Rice spit on Palmer's face while they were outside. After that, she gently backhanded him. I must say that he's lucky that's all he got, because if he spit in my face, he'll be picking your teeth up off the ground. Then Ray Rice spit in her face again on the elevator. That's when she came toward him, and he hit her twice. She hit her head on the wall, and a rail off rail of the elevator. Luckily for him, she didn't snap her neck. This would be more than just a domestic violence case. It would be a murder case. I had a video again for you. Make sure you watch it and let me know what you think about it. I want to know what y'all think. No person. think no person, man or woman, should have to go through this with the person that they love. 
Now I'm dealing with the same subject, but on a different level. On Monday, when the video was released, the NFL said that it was the first time they saw the video, and I think that's some capital B-U-L-L bull. That was a huge mistake on their part. CBS's Nora O'Donnell interviewed Roger Goodell about seeing the Ravex video. To be clear, did you know that a second tape existed? Well, we had not seen any videotape of what occurred in the elevator. We assumed that there was a video. We asked for video. We asked for anything that was pertinent. Uh, but we were never granted that opportunity. And after seeing the video, the interview of Roger, I think he gave it away to me that he was lying. The question, after he answered every question, he was blanking like this. And these weren't just normal blanks. They were nervous blanks. Like, let me stick to the story in my head so I don't mess up. I just don't believe him. And the day after the interview was released, a AP source broke news that the NFL had, in fact, received the video. The source said they received a voicemail from the NFL stating that the video was received back in April. Whoa, 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 whoa! Just last night, the commissioner of the NFL said they didn't receive the video. They asked for it, but they didn't get it. If this is true, and I believe it is, Roger, you have to be fired. You lied, Roger. You lied, you lied, you lied. Let me just say how stupid you made yourself look by not seeing the video. If you did not see the video, why did you hand out a suspension? You don't know what happened, so why? Why only a two-game suspension at that? If you were going to hand out a suspension before the full video was released, it should have been longer than just two games. Sp suspending rights just from viewing the initial video should have at least been an eight-game suspension minimum. reason why I say this is because Ray Rice was dragging... Palmer out of the elevator. I'm pretty sure she just didn't fall asleep on the elevator by herself. Somebody got knocked out and it wasn't Ray Rice. Right now, it seems like Roger Goodell is trying to save his own butt and I don't think it's working. He always preaches about protecting the shield, but he obviously isn't doing a great job at protecting the shield right now. He's making the situation worse by lying. Come out, tell the truth and resign, Roger. You messed up big time. The NFL owners have to fire Roger Goodell. Fire this man. I'll be available for the job for the next 51 years, up until Super Bowl 100. The board at Yorkville Clinic fired Dr. Lawrence Cohan. The doctor was supposed to perform what should have been a simple surgery on Joan Rivers, but he didn't. He allowed an ENT to step in and perform the surgery, an unauthorized procedure at that. During this time, Ms. Rivers went into cardiac arrest, and she eventually passed away last Thursday. Rapper Iggy Azalea has found herself in the middle of a potential sex tape scandal. News broke that someone from her past shopped a sex tape featuring Iggy to Vivid Entertainment. Azalea's camp originally said it was not Iggy. Then that changed to the person who was shopping the tape is trying to get back at Iggy. And Iggy says she was underage when the tape was filmed and she did not know it was being filmed. Well, a couple of hours ago, the person who was shopping the tape has been revealed to be Houston rapper Hefe Wine. What kind of name is that? He says Iggy was of age when the sex tape was recorded. He didn't even meet her until after her 18th birthday. Also, sh he, she was aware that the tape was being recorded. And the funny part of all this for you, all you reality TV fans, Hefe said he wasn't shopping the video, his computer was stolen, and it had the tape on it. However, he is willing to take some cash for the sex tape. Doesn't that remind you of Mimi and Nico? This is crazy. No one wants to keep sex private anymore, huh? There's an industry for that, you know. And here we go with the inspiration. For almost eight months now, I've been on a quest to find out what courage truly means. I believe there is some inspiration behind each quest or journey. And my inspiration behind my quest for courage is the late, great Dr. Maya Angelou. On multiple occasions, Dr. Angelou said, Courage is the most important of all virtues because without courage, you cannot practice any other virtue consistently. I say that to you guys on Monday's show. That got me thinking. What is courage? For courage to be the virtue that is required to practice all the other virtues consistently, it has to be powerful. I've looked at many explanations of what courage is, trying to figure out what it actually is, and there were plenty of exceptional explanations on what courage is, and all of them helped me. What I originally took in from these explanations is courage is living life without fear. While this may seem accurate, I quickly learned that it is inaccurate. It's okay to live fearlessly, but where would courage fit in if there is no fear? My oldest cousin, Sandra, who's also on the quest for courage, said to me, without fear, there is no need for courage. After I started, after I heard her say that, I started to scratch my head because that was an eye-opening statement. Seriously, courage doesn't mean you have to be fearless. 
You can still have fear and still have courage. Then what you have to do while being afraid or not is a better explanation of living with courage and just living fearlessly. The courage, the whole time I was on the journey to find out what courage was, I realized that my life the last two years have been a definition from courage. Starting with my second semester of senior year of high school, at this time we were getting ready for the graduation and college. This was a very scary time for me. I was unsure of what college had in store for me. What I didn't know was that no matter what fear or uncertainty I had about going to college, I had to deal with it. I had to be brave and move forward towards my future. I couldn't let fear or uncertainty stop me from living my best life. Me writing and sharing this piece and this video with everyone is also an act of courage. There was some fear that people wouldn't like this video. However, I'm going to go ahead and release it anyway. Thinking about my experiences revealed to me what courage actually is. Courage is being able to bravely go forward through life, not letting anything stop you from progressing. Even if you're scared, bringing out your best character, enabling you to live your best life. With that being said, courage is a choice. You have to make the choice to live with or without courage. While I think I know what courage is, that does not mean my quest for courage is over. I still have a lot to learn about the virtue and how to live with it consistently. Live with courage. I mentioned with my cousin Samcha and my quest of courage. I call her a champion of courage because I think that's what she is. I interviewed I interview. Sam said earlier about courage. Check it out right here. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm so, ready. Here we go. Um, what does courage mean to you? Well, courage is um, courage means to me that there is a way forward. Um, a lot of times we focus on the things that make us afraid, but what courage means is that you've made a decision to go forward, that there is a way forward, even while being afraid. Oh, I like that. That's big. Um, what inspired to, inspired you to embark on this journey of living a courageous life? Well, um, I will tell you that I actually reached a point in my life that um, I became afraid. There were things happening around me or in my life that totally petrified me. Um, I'm a mom and one of my children has a disability and um, receiving the diagnosis um, for her and that disability was really scary. Um, I think that I had uh, plenty of strength to deal with it. No problem, you know, with regard to, you know, not being able to move forward. But in her journey, um, we began to encounter things that I was not prepared for that, that totally made me afraid. And so I actually reached a point where I had to make a choice, uh, you know, do I keep moving or do I stop because I'm afraid? And when you're a mom, you want to keep moving. You can't stop, you know. You love your kids. You keep moving. And courage is the only way that it's possible. Um, and so one of the things that, however, really became clear is that I lacked courage. And so my relationship with Jesus Christ has actually been the source of my courage that, oh yes, I'm afraid, afraid for her, afraid of things going on in the world that impact her, but the dreams that I'm big, the dreams I'm dreaming for her are so big that I need courage to be able to keep pressing on for them, for her. Okay. Now since you've begun this journey, what changes have you noticed about yourself? First and foremost, that um, I alone cannot get what needs to be done accomplished. That, you know, if you can do it by yourself, you're not dreaming big enough. That's, that's been the most, I think, amazing thing um, that I've discovered. That if you aren't afraid of what you're dreaming, then you're not dreaming big enough. And so when I now get that twinge of butterflies coming, I feel like it's a it's a sign that, yes, I'm on the right track and that, oh, yes, I might be nervous or afraid, but I press on, I pray, um, and I use courage to 
to get it done. Because um, without fear, you don't even need courage. So that's that's how it, it's that's been the biggest thing that I've seen um, happen. I I love that. Um, how does living a courageous life affect your decision making? Well, first of all, um, living courageously is a decision, and so I have found freedom in that. That you know, I don't need to be paralyzed by my fear. That um, fear is a sign. I'm using fear as a, a kind of a a big road sign that I am on the right track, and I find freedom in that. Yeah, I once thought that courage was um, not having fear, but then you pointed out to me without fear, there's no need for courage. So then I, just, I totally, totally changed my views on courage, and I believe that's true. Without fear, there's no need for courage, because <clears throat> you'll just go forward, right? Without even that's there's, right. there's nothing that'll be able to stop you. And I think fear is like a barrier that tries to stop you, right? That's right. Okay. Um. Why is living a courageous life important? Well, if you aren't living courageously, then what you've then decided is that you don't want to live your purpose, that you don't want to reach for a better day, that there is no future, um, that you're settling, that you're settling for survival, for just waking up in the morning and just dealing with what, life gives you that day as opposed to taking the thing that kind of has you a bit nervous and finding a way to be undaunted and living out the purpose for which you were created. Wow. That's why it's so important. I know you said that courage was a decision, but can it also be a choice? I mean, I Yeah, know. because you can decide that you still don't want to do the thing, whatever the thing that's making you afraid. And, you know, my my personal faith is in Jesus Christ. Um, and for others, they may have different um, beliefs. But um, in, in my faith tradition, um, we are given freedom of choice. Like, our own free will is always um, at, opera- at, at operation. So I can choose to not... I can choose not to to move forward. Okay. I know you're still on a journey to a courageous life, but what do you believe the steps that one can take towards living a courageous life? The first thing is having a dream and dreaming big. What you're dreaming about has to be big, something that you and you alone can't get accomplished. Um, Goals are certainly things that we can accomplish in our own strength, but the thing that you're dreaming about has to be big because fear will come, but your dream has to be bigger than what you're fearing. It does. I, it, it took me back to a term that one of my friends always says, teamwork makes the dream work, and I guess, yep. I guess that's hitting me now. Is living a courageous life, living a life with endless possibilities? I think it is. Um, I think that um, living a courageous life has, it it translates into being unstoppable. I'm actually reading a a book um, that just came out um, maybe a couple weeks ago, and it's actually called Unstoppable. It's by Christine Kane. I'm giving her a plug. I don't know her. I don't get any cuts or anything. Mm -hmm. But um, she had a book um, that I read previously called Undaunted. And then this new book is called Unstoppable. But what essentially it's talking about is that the things that rise up in our life, they can be extremely daunting. Um, the kind of the kind of things that would stop you in your tracks. But that's exactly what um, is it's designed to do: stop you in your tracks. That thing for which you were created to do is is trying to be you know aborted, if you will. And it's making a decision and, and recognizing that the, pursuing those possibilities um, has to be done in a courageous way. Mm. Is there a difference between being brave and being courageous? Um, this one was tough. I want you to know um, because <laughs> just sort of as 
first glance, you might think no. But I think brave is what you inherently come to the table with. Okay. Um, some of us are extremely brave in, in, in and of ourselves. And so in the face of fear, because of who we are, um, we can be brave. To me, and, and that is that's that, that raw, you know, strength, if you will. And when I, and for me, when I think about courageous, it is being self-aware that you are afraid, that there is something in your past that is causing you to be afraid or that you are fearing, but then you've decided to do it anyway. Wow. What is it that you hope to get out of living a courageous life? Um, results. I, I tell you what, I want everything for which my creator created for me that he has in mind for me. That's that's what I'm hoping, that I don't want there to be anything that I'm leaving on the table because I wasn't courageous enough to go after it. Oh, that's, that's really big. Well, that's all the questions. Thank you so, so much for being. But thank you for asking me to, to participate with you, and I wish you the very best in you. your show. Thank you. You're our first teacher. <laughs> thank you. I thought that this interview would help us all. She had a lot of meaningful things to say. My favorite thing from the interview was when she said, if you can achieve your dream on your own, you're not dreaming a big enough dream. I wish you all could have been there to see my face when I heard her say this. It was knock your socks off good. Now, in closing the show, that's our show for today. I hope you all enjoyed it. I'll see you all, all on Monday. Make sure you all tune in on Monday. Our inspiration will be coming from a surprising person. Well, for those of you who know me personally, you'll be surprised when you find out who will be inspiring us next time. Till next time, be blessed, y'all. Remember to live courageously, courageously, everyone.